Throughout the ages, people have made the decision to put their lives on hold and venture out to explore the world on a shoestring budget. Carrying everything they need to survive on their backs, these intrepid travellers voluntarily subject themselves to substandard living conditions in exchange for something extraordinary. An opportunity to open their minds and immerse themselves in different cultures. To see and do things they'd never dreamt of. Not to mention get absolutely faced, party with fellow travellers and try and have sex with people from all over the globe. This is the story of three Aussie mates who decided to change their lives and become backpackers. Pretty good year, boys. This I don't it. think there'll ever be another time in my life where I'll travel to 20 countries in one year. And not to mention with my two best mates. I never want to see you two ever again once again. <laughs> go. The three of us have been on the road for a year. It's hard to believe we're actually on our way home. For the last 12 months, we've lived a tight ass existence. As we drink ourselves to sleep, the pilot flies us closer, towards our old lives, and we can't help but revisit the insane year we've just had, and the unique characters we've met along the way. But in the state we're in, it's hard to remember back to when this all began. Welcome to Backpackers. Uh, I've just woken up, it's about uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we're in Melbourne, it's about 10 days before we leave for London, and uh, I'm going to ring up a clairvoyant and uh, see if she'll tell us a little bit about what's going to happen over the next year. So I made the call, and the next day, we went to Psychic Suburbia. She wasn't the stereotypical fortune teller that we expected, but she did have a lot to say. I take five curses off a week. Wow. Just be careful of things stolen. I see a little short blonde girl for you. No, I see a tiny person with big green eyes. Some good news for Jag, but not so good for Lee. I feel that you're going to have a child in the next two years. <laughs> so there you have it. That's the psychic forecast for the rest of the year. Just recapping, there's a general bag theft warning throughout the entire continent. That's coupled with a good chance of romance for Jag somewhere in this region here. That should come in the form of a short, blonde-haired, green-eyed Italian girl. Finally, there's also a high probability of pregnancy for Lee somewhere throughout the trip. That's either here, here, or here. So keep an eye out for that one. It's moving time, baby! Moving! You're up! Here we go! We're currently moving all our possessions out of our house into a storage facility in Colac, and then we're out of here, baby! Europe's the good part. This is the shit part. We've driven to Colac, which is about a two hour drive. We've driven there and back to Melbourne, which is a four hour drive. We've done that about three times now. And we've got about two more times to go before we hop on that plane and get the out of here. Time's running out now. Time's really running out now. Three days, three short days, and then we're out of here, baby. We're out of here, baby! Look <laughs> <laughs> right in the eye. Hello, my name's Jay. I work currently as a pizza chef. Done, done that for about three years. Never liked this it's shit. No one likes to make pizzas. My name's Mick. I'm 24. I was a sound recordist with a travelling TV show and um, we travelled all over the world. The first job I had was I went to Greece, I went to the Greek islands. And now I'm an editor, I just spend all my time in a dark hole. Can I please have one ticket for the merry-go-round? 
My name's Lee Marnie. I'm 23 years old. And I make ice cream for a living. Qualified motorbike mechanic. But there's nothing quite like making ice cream. So you ready, mate? No. <laughs> no? The next two hours of what I've been dreading for the last six months, I think. Yeah. The next two hours, but then... Me too, mate. That's what I've been looking forward to I mean, for my whole life. Good one. It's about to happen. I have eaten one and a half thousand pizzas in the last three years. That's so many pizzas, and you just sit there after you've made them all, and you just look at them, this giant wall of pizzas, and the effort taken to make this crap. I've got nothing to show for all that time. I broke up a relationship. It couldn't last because I had to go overseas and just basically split it off, even though I feel completely comfortable within that relationship. I got third in the Victorian Championships in rock and roll dancing. I play footy and I race motorbikes. I like to play guitar constantly, obsessively. That's great. I've traveled very little. I've barely been out of the state. I've never been on a plane. I don't have any spare time at all. Any time that I do have, I use it to work. And then any time I've got left over, I spend on picking up. Now, like, it's time to do something for me. So, I think it's about time to take a break. And like I said, just hop on a plane and off. And I know that after going to Europe and coming back, I'm just not gonna be scared of anything. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh yeah, there's just one more thing. I'm a virgin! I went 23 years of my life without sex. How did it make me feel? Uh -huh. Not good. Didn't make me feel good, obviously. My very sweet mother was a bit afraid of the camera. We're leaving for the airport in a few hours. Unfortunately, my dad's not, not taking it too well. He's just had a heart attack recently. He's still pretty ill. And every, every time I try to talk to him, he's pretty much on the verge of tears. Which is he's crying and crying. I'm very upset. I just want to spend some more time with him before I go, but it's just making him so much worse. It's Probably going back about seven months now. My stepmother got killed, car accident, guy fell asleep at the wheel. I realised that in a second you can have a dream of going somewhere next week. The last thought that I want to go through my head is, honestly, I have no regrets. If you say you're going to do something, you do it. And you don't only just do it, but you do it there and then. It's pretty easy to say I, I definitely feel selfish. Leaving behind my dad, he had a stroke about three years ago. If I get sick or if I cargo, I do not want you to come back. Stay in Europe. Don't stuff up your holiday just for me. If I don't do it now, I'm just not going to do it. See ya. See ya. to go through the big silver gate. Coming up after this very short and informative commercial break, we take a 24-hour flight to London. You know the place. Stay tuned. Hey guys, mix of sleep. What better time to do an ad for the DVDs? Hey Mick. Oh. <laughs> Are you trying to wake me up? We've done it. Tell us about the DVD. Oh. It's a DVD. Twist it. You're watching Backpackers! All you said is that it's a DVD. Buy it. Ah, it's a bad This is it. We've been waiting for this moment for the last two or so years. We're about to get on the plane that's going to take us to the other side of the world. How you doing, James? I'm doing alright. But here's the thing. I've never flown before and I'm kind of stressing out about the whole situation. It's his first time on the plane. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> that's a bit of worry. But the panic doesn't really set in until we're airborne. This is our flight. This is where we take off. Are you ready to vomit, James? Not yet. Give me, give me some time. He's not doing too good, poor little guy. How are you, James? So 
so I'm freaking out in a big way. But luckily I've got my two best mates here to take my mind off things. The captain has given us a bit of a turbulence warning. We're expecting turbulence. I look forward to uh, turbulence when everyone's gone. Okay. Yeah! Not just, you know, it, there could be some. The captain of the plane, he's worried about it enough to actually say it, to give us a warning about it. When you see the wings start bouncing up and down and people start going... Whoa, whoa, like this, James, and your head goes like this. Happy place. You're okay? What about that? That's a bit, even for me, that's a little full on. I've flown quite a few times. Turbulence is the thing I hate the most in life. Just like this. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about something other than turbulence? <laughs> this is a toilet on a Boeing 747. Ooh. It's a claustrophobic nightmare, but still, Every year, thousands of couples come here to practice coital activities oh. and join one of the most fastest growing ah. exclusive clubs in the world. Ah. I'm talking, of course, of the Mile High Club. Ah. Yeah. For single travellers, it's not particularly easy to join, but I'm up for the challenge. Oh. Earlier, before we boarded the plane, I met a girl at the airport. I just met this person. She was blonde. Cute, and just happened to be on our plane. This was my chance. Awesome. I'm going to try and join the Mile High Club tonight. I reckon she's keen. I think she's on her way to Italy, which means I've only got till Singapore to, uh, yeah, try and score. I started with some general conversation just to test the waters. Have you heard of the Mile High Club? Yeah. Uh, have you ever been a member of the Mile High Club? <laughs> no. Then I moved in for the kill. So, yeah. would you like to go into the toilets and have sex with me? Is he serious? Do, does he actually think that I'm going to do that? Does, do, do you think I'm actually going to take it? Say, yeah, oh my God, that's a wicked idea. Are you, oh my God, are you for real? Can we right now? No. Fair enough. Oh well. Goodbye. I'm gonna go join it by myself. <laughs> See ya. That was fun. Not exactly as fulfilling as I'd hoped, but nonetheless, I think it counts as joining the Mile High Club. Roughly a day later, our plane touches down at Heathrow Airport. The busiest in the world. We find ourselves 16,913 kilometres from home. We're in a foreign land with no idea what to do next. And obviously, you, you will have plenty of pubs, plenty of clubs, yeah. plenty of women, plenty of everything there. Cool. All right. Hey, there you go. That's awesome. But our bus has just arrived over here and it uh, looks like we're going to miss it. So um, there it goes. The guys are inside, so we've missed two so far. When we finally get on that bus, we're going to head on into London and see if we can find somewhere to stay. When we finally get on the bus, it just does laps around and around the airport. Nah, yeah, we've been here before. I'm serious. <laughs> Except we're on that side of the road. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. But eventually, the bus driver gets his shit together and finds a way out. And we're on our way to the centre of London. Very surreal. Very, very surreal. We're overseas. London. Cloudy, overcast London. First stop on our European tour. 7,619,000 whinging poms live in this overcrowded little town. It's the home of the Crown Jewels, Bangers and Mash, and Punk Rock. This is the Queen stomping ground where everything costs almost three times as much as back in Oz. Our first temporary home away from home. We just needed to find a place to crash. And we don't really know where to go, so we're just going to ask some people, see if we can find out. I uh, just wanted to ask you a couple of quick questions. Excuse me, mate. Uh, not too many friendly people in this place. No one really wants to talk to us. Unfortunately, Londoners aren't really known for their friendliness, but our persistence eventually pays off. Window washer. Did you just got over it now? Yeah. What, today? From Australia? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. Places to stay you want? Oh. What, like cheap places? Yeah. You're in totally the wrong area around here. I'd do more of Europe than I would of this place. England's hole, <laughs> honestly. Don't trust anyone in England. They'll scam you. People will rip you off before they can move. They'll scam you. If they think they can get something out of you, they'll have it, so be careful. But the window washer warning was quickly forgotten. We moved on to experience our first taste of the sweet, sweet hostel life. And we really liked what we were tasting. We're in our own 
little hostel. And just through that wall is the bar. I've stayed in a hostel like this. I think that people get an uh, opportunity to meet other travellers like themselves, especially people first time away from home. So much fun! I'm loving it. I've been addicted to backpacking for about, uh, about two years now. The other thing too is people trade a lot of tips. If you meet a French girl who will like you, she will give you the impression she doesn't like you. It's always funny trying to see a, you know, a nice Australian boy like yourself trying to chat up a young French girl. I am from Television France and I would like to say... You see showers getting used for other reasons what they should be. <laughs> Meeting lots of people. A cameraman tonight <laughs> is French. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Frenchie. Bonjour, comment allez-vous? No worries, Frenchie. I hate you when you call me Frenchie, I told you. <laughs> Hello, Australia. This is Backpackers. We're from Holland and this is James. <laughs> so, can you turn off the camera video because I don't have anything to say more? Thank you very much. Alright, backpacker tip time. This is food. When you're backpacking, you have food, but what you don't have is a fridge because you just can't afford to bring a fridge with you. When you're living in the cold, cold climate of London, dangle your sleeping bag cover outside the window using a length of rope and you can put your food inside it. Tie it off nice and well. You know what? This falling, caning anyone. Now it's that simple. Instant fridge. And if you have some alcoholic beverages that you'd like to keep cool, dangle them out as well and they'll be perfect. Coming up next on Backpackers, I go on 45 dates with 45 different women in one night. I shit you not. Mick is asleep again. So time for admin number two. Mick has been known to sleep talk. Hey mate, what's going on? What do you got, what do you got in your hands there? What do you got there? Some uh, what? <laughs> what? industrial space age in incredible glue. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to glue some other things to other things. It's going to be a glue festival. What the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> Come on, Gluey. Let's go to sleep, Gluey. A week later, we find ourselves passed out in the same hostel. Crevice! Don't let anyone fool you. Hostel life is what it's cracked up to be. But it's also a very strange existence. Hi. In a 12-bed shared dorm, new roommates arrive and leave almost every day. No one's getting changed. In this tight-ass way of life, a staple diet exists primarily of beer and then anything else with even a hint of flavour. These are f***ing great. Yes, this is the highlight. In fact, this night we dine in style. On the menu... Cheesy baked beans. On toast. They look great. What's that huge chuck? It's on cheese. Cheese. Big blocks. And we need our cheesy bean fueled energy. For tonight, we're leaving the hostel to venture to the outside world. Love is in the air in London with Valentine's Day rapidly approaching but unfortunately not everyone has a date and one new and innovative way to get a date is speed dating. So how does it work? Well you take 45 horny guys, 45 horny girls and everybody gets themselves a scorecard and a three minute date with every member of the opposite sex in the room. 45 chances to meet Mr or Mrs Wright. Tonight, Lee is the backpacker's guinea pig. Do you think you'll find love here? Uh, 45 beautiful women in there James. I think I've got a good chance. I've got my scorecard, all I have to do is fill it out. Badge number, name, and tick or no tick. Hope I get a few ticks. Let the dating begin. Everybody in the room simultaneously starts to bust their moves with no time to make a lasting impression. 
Leanne, uh, why have you come to speed dating tonight? One of my friends asked me to come with her. I'm a, I'm a speed dater virgin. I just uh, broke up from a long-term relationship, so I thought I'd get back on the horse really quickly. <laughs> After a shag? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm off the girl of my dreams. Yeah. Actually, I actually have spotted some girls over in that far corner there that, that really? are yeah, quite oh. tasty. Nice to meet you too. You get used to it after a while. I've told my uh, details about 35 times already. I think I'm starting to get sick of it. I don't know how the girls like it. I'm a little bit worried that Lee is getting all the women and James and I are here operating the cameras, which is, you know, it's a job. Three minutes at a time, the night became older. We all became drunker and the chicks became even hotter. But you had a little incident earlier on. <laughs> Norwegian uh, personal trainer and we kind of hit it off but um, his breath stank so I didn't give him a tick. <laughs> Your boob fell out at the table. Yeah the boob fell out of the top. I've been trying to get an interview with Lee but he just won't stop talking to women. He's just <laughs> constantly talking to women so he can't get to him. Was it the whole boob? Uh, yes. It's fair enough. Why wouldn't you talk to attractive women constantly if that was an option? The whole boob? Yes. And I went, oh how long have you been here? And I went nine days and they went, oh, fresh meat off the boat. But I didn't come here on a boat. I can't believe we missed that. <laughs> Could we have a reenactment perhaps? No, no, that's just taking a little bit too cut, fast. Cut, cut, cut. Of the people that you talk to tonight, what percentage of those people's boobies would you like to touch? It's 80. Ah, uh, there's been one potential. Yes, yeah, Stefan. Stefan. My friend Paula and I both like him. We have found two girls over there and they're actually fighting over who, who is going to uh, get the next date with you. So we'll both take yes and then we'll fight like bitches. Excellent. <laughs> We've had two marriages actually. One guy asked, asked me if I wanted a shag. You see someone who particularly is very attractive and then within the three minutes their personality will, you know, emerge and you begin to change your view of them. One guy sang John Bon Jovi to this woman. Hey baby. I don't think that was the way to go about it. Hey baby. Hey baby. <laughs> a lot of people started slurring their words and falling when they went to sit on the chair and people were going, so what do you do? We won't talk about boobs this time, I promise. Any luck? No. No good. Are you coming to the after party? Yes. I bags a dance with you, okay? Okay. All right, that's a promise. 45 dates and several drinks later, the night was over and I was all dated out. Captain Datathon, what's the prognosis? Many dates, more dates than I've ever had in my life. I got a phone number, I'm going to a party this Saturday night. Log on to the internet site, see how many ticks and crosses I got. That night, Lee received 24 ticks and 21 crosses. And Mick danced with Leanne well into the morning. But had all this dating been in vain? The next night, and the day before Valentine's Day, I meet a girl the traditional way, getting pissed in a karaoke bar. The thing about pubs in London is they close at 11pm, so you've got to get in early. And Lee was well on his way. We'd met a group of 10 American girls. 10 lovely ladies! And put on a show sure to impress. A young woman by the name of Lexi tickled Lee's fancy and sparks began to fly. They exchanged numbers and soon even larger sparks flew. This was to be the beginning of something almost half beautiful. I don't really know what this means for the rest of our plans. I didn't expect to do my nuts over a chick so quickly and so early on in the trip. I guess when you're travelling like this, a lot can happen in a short amount of time, as we were about to find out in the next 12 minutes. You see, in another place, at another time, something not so great was about to happen. Mick, Lee and I, and three Swedish girls, are heading to the initial backpacking venue that we went to when we first got to London. You know those times directly before some unexpected bad shit goes down? Those happy-go-lucky minutes before you catch a finger open or you step on a nail? <laughs> For some reason I actually wasn't expecting that. <laughs> when you're totally oblivious to the trouble that lies ahead and you have absolutely no idea that somewhere a clock is counting down and that happy, carefree smile is about to get wiped off your face. Shut the bus shut, man. What? It's Monday. This is one of those moments. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. 
<laughs> oh no. Suddenly, all our plans were put on hold. This is, <laughs> this is such bad news. Next time on Backpackers, we go to church and it's not what you'd expect. Nelly's a good snog. The shit hits the fan with the first sign of money troubles. I ran out of money yesterday, but it is very expensive here, so it's not entirely my fault. Not everyone's happy. You will stand here for three f***ing hours and talk with me about this, unrelenting, not flexing, and you said it's about coming to a to common you. ground. Will Lee's new romance threaten the trip? We move on into Ireland and find out what happened on that fateful night. <laughs> on the next Backpackers. I just got a pint down this guy's pants, and this guy is a I've had so much alcohol. The name would be the Backpackers, and I'm sure he will work. I asked up when he called him a Throw more beer on me, Go, go overseas. It's amazing. Say hello to Australia. Ozzy, we love you. When you call me Frenchie, I told you. <laughs> You're watching Backpackers! You look at me like you've never seen a f condom on my head before. So the burger's already uh, cooking, we're having a barbecue. We're really, really drunk. We're not even watching the show, we just... Yes we are, yes we are, Lee, we're watching it. It's now passed out on the table. It's nice and warm in here. We're, we're getting into the pool, it's very warm. I'm drawing in my eyes, don't draw in my eyes. We, we're gonna have to re-record re this. This is filming from a very long way away. You see that lady yeah. on off me because she walks past. <laughs> seeing a crazy man talking out to the water <laughs> like he's a TV star. <laughs> I've got a... Uh, a card here, which is uh, my backpacker's card, and I'm wondering whether I can convince Jaguar to eat it. I don't really want to eat it. Oh, <laughs> so, so Mick has proceeded to eat it himself. Uh, I really can't imagine someone listening to this, but uh, you, you never know. <laughs> oh, we tried to film those ducks for ages. We wanted to scare Leroy. He was in the toilet having a shit. We wanted to throw the bread under us so the ducks would go in and scare him. Didn't work. Our voiceover booth is made of old door frame and a foam mattress and I just found a pube. Why is there a pube in here? There's a lot of pubes in here. Ready? Roll record, Jaguar! Do you want me to record? Nah, I was just saying it for effect. <laughs> just saying it. Roll record, James, so that we can cut it into a montage at the start of the show. Dirty clothes! <laughs> What's, What's going clothes? on? Oh. Dirty! Dirt! 
Filthy! Now we know where the pubes came from. Welcome to the making of backpackers. Dooley loop, dooley loop. There's a couple of really handsome guys running around with cameras. I don't know if anyone remembers the Backpackers series. This is dedicated to them. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How about filming me instead? Alright, you ready? Alright, rolling. <laughs> Why do you love covering countries with steps so much? <laughs> Ten tons of tomatoes being tossed about today. It was obvious this was going to get very messy. Alright, it's rolling. Then we should pop up. We can walk in from a corner. Yeah, we can pop up. Pop up, it's good. It's comical. It'll work. Hey there. Oh, I pulled on my cable. Hi. I've shot it a bit. Hey there. Welcome to disc two. Are we doing disc two? <laughs> hey there. Hello. <laughs> this is the backpackers DVD. We find. Doo -doo 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 -doo.